Good evening. Molly Maguire is on assignment. Ontario Premier Mike Harris has criticized striking public service workers for uncivilized behavior on the picket line. The union was quick to condemn Harris and has released a video which they say proves strikers are acting in a civilized fashion. <laughs> Again. Don't cross our picket line. Thank you, thank you. Can we wash your car for you? Can we change your oil for you? Would you like us to clean your windows? For his part, Harris says he wants the striking workers to police themselves. I'm sorry, that should read, Harris wants the police themselves to start striking the workers. <laughs> Buckingham Palace breathed a sigh of relief last week when Princess Diana agreed to divorce her husband, Prince Charles. Diana told friends that the day she agreed to the split was the saddest day of her life. Shy Di will continue to live at Kensington Palace and will be involved in all decisions concerning the children. Although little is known about the rest of the settlement, this hour has 22 minutes has learned that Princess Diana will receive a large cash sum. She will keep her half of any shared property or wardrobe and will have the choice of retaining the title Diana, Princess of Wales or that of Spooky, the bug-eyed gym rat. <laughs> the second session of the 35th Parliament began in Ottawa last week. As always, Canada's Governor General was at the center of the proceedings. The first task at hand was the sentencing of nine men for impersonating Santa Claus out of season. The sentence was simultaneously translated into Scottish for the benefit of Senator Alan McEachan. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Prime Minister was deep in contemplation. To international news now, Cuba 2, America zip. <laughs> Six players from the University of Moncton's Blue Eagles hockey team may be facing assault charges following an ugly incident on the ice in Charlottetown. The Moncton players were unhappy with the decision made by the referee, so they attacked him. A week has passed since the brawl, but the controversy continues. We go back to the rink now, where we talk to referee Logie Collins and player Fabian Fisticuffs Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Hey! Hello. Hello. Logie Collins, how are you feeling? Well, I can move my arms now, and I still have the piercing neck pain, so I haven't really slept in a few days. Now, Mr. Ferguson, you don't seem at all sorry for what you and the rest of your team has done to Mr. Collins. The hockey is no different from croquet or golf. It's a blood sport. <laughs> Logie's a wuss. Ask anybody. Well, what about good sportsmanship and, you know, just being civil? Say again? You'll have to speak slower, Sydney. Like all of the lower primates, Mr. Ferguson here has trouble absorbing certain foreign concepts. Like, when we say face-off, we don't mean tear someone's face off. <laughs> you see that, Sydney? He's asking for it. Always blowing his whistle, skating around, talking. Tell me you wouldn't like to take his arms off and just beat his brains out with him! <laughs> Mr. Ferguson, mm. have you ever considered any kind of counseling? Sorry, I don't follow. Well, you know, it don't seems to me... Don't waste your breath, Sidney. The man is not an athlete. He's a, he's a bouncer with skates, basically. Wussy girl. He's a thug. <laughs> Who's the little wussy girl? It's sad, this sort of behavior. Wussy, 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 wussy. Excuse me there, Sidney, for one second. Come here for one second. <laughs> one second, Sidney. <laughs> He'll be fine. You know, that neck pain seems to have oh, cleared right up. Well, uh, thank you for this, and watch your back, okay? Will do. Come on, hit me like you mean it. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Tuesday on the Cyber Beat. Free long-distance phone calls to anywhere on the planet. And it's perfectly legal? Yes, it's true. 
City Beat on the Cyber Beat, Tuesday on Newswatch. Violinist Laris and John made such an impression at the last Montreal International Music Competition that we asked her back. She and pianist Louise Andre Baril will play music by Bartok, Bach, and Rubin. <laughs> Jean Chrétien is visiting Grenada this week. Our foreign correspondent, Tim McMillan, is following Chrétien's visit. We speak with him now. Hello, Tim. Hello! <laughs> Can you tell us what the Prime Minister is doing in Grenada? No! And why is that, Tim? Because I'm not exactly in Grenada. I see. Well, where exactly are you, Tim? I'm in Grenada, in Spain. Why, Tim? I got on the wrong flight. I'm sure that they announced the one for Grenada, but I must have got on the one for Grenada. So you have no report about Kretchen's trip down south? Well, only what I heard on the CBC shortwave. Apparently, he's gone down to Grenada. That's okay, Tim. We already know where he is. Or I could read you the newspaper report. That's all right. Bear with me. It's in Spanish. Los Premier Canadianos John Cretchen esta un turista los islandos Granada. I'm going to have to cut you off, Tim. You know, come to think of it, I don't think I'm even allowed back in Grenada. Remember the last time I was down there? Myself and Al Waxman ended up in jail for stealing a cheese wheel from the Presidente? Vaguely. Yeah, and you had to get that Canadian hostage guy, Ken Taylor, to get us out? We gotta go, Tim. But I could have sworn it was pronounced Grenada, Frank. Let's just drop it. Well, I gotta go, Frank. Donald Sutherland is having a drink thing at his villa. But I'll definitely call you if I hear anything about Cretchen's trip. Well, you just keep us posted, Tim. Good night and goodbye. The Bank of Montreal has been criticized for some casting decisions in their most recent ad campaign. The ad campaign features so-called average Canadians holding up signs to a camera. The Association of Canadian Bankers has defended the casting, saying it was a match made in heaven. We get away with murder, and so does he. <laughs> the popular children's show Sesame Street will no longer be shown on the CBC, but there will be a Canadian version called Sesame Park. The Canadian version will not be set in the inner city like the original, rather it will be moved to the suburbs. The producers say the main reason for moving the show out of the city was to find a new audience, increase the ratings, and wean the puppets off crack. <laughs> Canadian entertainers dominated the Grammy Awards last week. Awards were won by such high-profile Canadian performers as Joni Mitchell and Shania Twain. But the big winner of the night was Alanis Morissette. Morissette captured four Grammys last Wednesday night and shocked viewers by uttering the F word in the performance of her hit song, You Oughta Know. Morissette began her career years ago as a bubblegum pop singer known mostly for performing in shopping malls. But even that was a step up from the singer's first job, mascot for an Ottawa high school basketball team. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mike Matthews. Called everybody. Yeah. Everybody here, everybody back home. Everybody back home, I gave them a call. All right, you're gonna go bank with your phone bill. Yeah, I hate to disappoint you guys, but uh, you should see the deal I got. Yeah, and only three numbers. Uh, I know all numbers. Introducing a long distance plan that makes sense. 25% off all calls, anytime, anywhere. So why, are you I'm special or something like that? I'll tell you why, it's because I, cause I spent over 25 bucks a month, oh, that's really? why. Yeah, all right, so can you call Hong Kong? Yeah, I could, I could call Hong Kong. Now, did you call Hong Kong there, Cheesy? Did you call to Laura? You oh. did, didn't you? <laughs> you called Laura in Hong Kong. 25% off all calls anytime, anywhere, including overseas and calling card. Call 1-800-957-1234. You know, where there's a spark, there's a flame. <laughs> laugh, laugh like you will. Nice talking to you. It's a steal.
straight up Monday. Obviously, there are a lot of Canadians out there who aren't having a very good time. Everywhere you look, east, west, north, south, there they are. They're waving their signs. They're shouting down with this one, up with this one, in with X, out with Y. Problem is, it doesn't work anymore. It's gotten to the point now you can't see the cause for the protest. It's gotten to the point now you can't even tell if Buddy with the sign is an actual protester or if he's just selling RRSPs for the Bank of Montreal. <laughs> And strikes, premiers used to be afraid of thousands of workers walking off the job in protest. Now, none of them could be bothered. First thing Mike Harris said when the crowd in Ontario went on strike was good. Now the people will save millions of dollars a day. What people? People on the picket lines are people. They're not saving any money. People who used to sell stuff to people on the picket lines are people. They're not saving any money. Problem is, the person who leads the people is the premier, and he figures ignoring the people on the picket line is fiscally responsible. If public service unions in this country want to actually get attention, they should do exactly the opposite of what they're doing in Ontario. They should stay on the job, they should cash their checks, and then they should go out on the lawn and cut up their credit cards. Two million snipped up credit cards sitting in a pile. And then let the banks call the premier. And unlike when the union calls, that's a call he'll actually take. <laughs> The Indiana woman was taken to hospital last week when she tried to remove a callus from her foot with a shotgun. Bonnie Booth told police that she had consumed a gallon of vodka and a few beer for courage before attempting to remove the growth. Authorities in Muncie were familiar with Booth since last winter when she tried to shave her legs with a flamethrower. The so-called king of pop, Michael Jackson, has his eye on a piece of real estate in France. The $5 million chateau is similar to Sleeping Beauty's castle at Walt Disney's theme parks. Upon seeing the chateau for the first time, Jackson is said to have burst into a chorus of, Someday my prince will come. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Prince could not be reached for comment. The Ford Motor Company was profoundly embarrassed last week when it was revealed that a photograph of assembly line workers had been altered to change black and East Indian workers into white men. The company claimed that there was no racial motive in making the changes, and to prove the point, the company altered the ad campaign again so as to restore a true demographic of Ford Company workers. Paul Newman has been involved in a car crash in Westport, Connecticut. The good news is Newman broke only his hand in the accident. The bad news is that Howie Mandel was not in the crash. He received no serious injury, and he continues to do his act across the country. Hi, I'm Sandy Campbell, and this is The Campbell File. <laughs> I'll tell you what's crazy. A scientist in Britain put mirrors on the walls of his flamingo pen so the birds would think they were in a crowd and would want to mate. That's crazy. Outside of Melanie Griffith and Antonio Banderas, who wants to mate in front of a crowd? <laughs> Besides, the mirrors go on the ceiling, Sherlock. <laughs> Luciano Pavarotti's sleeping with his secretary, and his wife says it could be dangerous. Well, sure it can. What if he rolls over in the middle of the night? Splat! <laughs> That'll be the last bit of dictation she ever takes. <laughs> Scientists have been studying rats that live near the Chernobyl power station, and it seems these radioactive fur balls are breeding like crazy. I've been trying to get Hub to stand in front of the microwave, but he still won't make a move on me unless I tape a ham sandwich to my navel. <laughs> well, the Junos are coming, and yes, once again, I wasn't nominated. <laughs> I don't care, though. All that talent and collagen and silicone in one room. It's so exciting. Oh, personal hygiene be damned. I want to be a musician. <laughs> that factory in Russia that pays its workers with bras. Don't forget to put a few C cups in your RSP, comrade. <laughs> what about those people who drink their own urine because they think it's a miracle cure? Yuck! I think they're just too cheap to throw it away. <laughs> in other disgusting news, there's a restaurant in Singapore where they serve dried deer penis soup, just like Mom used to make. <laughs> Dear penis soup. It's not just for breakfast anymore. I'm Sandy Campbell. Good night.
sir. Men, we salute you. Okay, let's start it all off with Jean Charest says he stopped flirting with Preston Manning. Good. Can you imagine what the kids would look like? <laughs> lap dancing in Ontario is overturned. Oh, an overturned lap dance? Is that extra? Fifteen bucks. <laughs> Sign me up. Chinese New Year. Out with the pig, in with the rat. Goodbye, Parizo. Hello, Bouchard. Fifty-seven percent of Canadians want to drop the Queen from the citizenship oath. Hey! Leave Bob Ray alone, he's out of public life. <laughs> Wayne Goreski, he's overpaid, lacks skills, never scores. Kinda like Sheila Copps. Lisa Marie says there is no way she will ever go back to the King of Pop. Ah, she must be sick and tired of doing that darn Macaulay Culkin impersonation. <laughs> Pat Buchanan's sister runs his campaign. His sister? Don't get me wrong, I'm a feminist, but shouldn't she be making the lads some sandwiches? I like it. You gotta. And that's... The right answer. The Reform Party's justice critic, Art Hanger, has endorsed a return to corporal punishment in Canada. Mr. Hanger is leading a delegation of reformers to Singapore so they can witness public floggings up close. To Ottawa now, where we speak with that delegation. Uh, before we start, uh, may I just say, spare the rod, spoil the child. Okay, but why is the Reform Party so interested in corporal punishment and public floggings? Reform believes in discipline, personally, economically, and domestically. Now, Mr. Smith. Yes, what is it? You are an educator? Yes, I am, and the kids are out of control. Can I go to the bathroom now? Can I go to the library now? Can I take my insulin now? Right. In my day, a child could metabolize blood sugar on three squares a day. In our day, a child was seen and not heard. You are aware that corporal punishment was outlawed in Canada in 1973. Yes, and diabetes is through the roof. Now, this mission has been described as very hands-on. Well, for the most part, yes. I will be there in the room as a bad child is spanked and a man who chews gum is flogged. Yes, and I will be given the chance to actually wield a whip. <laughs> and I will be receiving five lashes. <laughs> Good God, that is hands-on. How did you decide on your roles? Did you draw straws? No, we answered Art Hanger's personal in the back of the Reform Party newsletter. Yes, and I, I like to spank. And... I like to be spanked. And I like to watch. <laughs> Andy, why don't you skip Singapore and rent a motel room? Gosh, it would be more cost-effective. Or, or better yet, we could go back to Art Hanger's house. He's got a hot tub. Ah, uh, but does he have a blindfold? Oh, who's been naughty? Oh, I've been naughty. How naughty? Oh, really naughty. Good, oh. I Spanking and saving. Spanking and saving. Well, there you have it. A great Reform Party moment. Meeting the objective and saving on airfield. Good night. According to a recent ruling, the European Committee for Standardization wants all condoms produced in Europe to be no shorter than 17 centimeters or 6.6 .6 inches. During an uncomfortable moment in the British Parliament yesterday, Prime Minister John Major was puzzled by the decision, stating that, quote, tripling the normal length seems excessive, doesn't it? I mean, we're not making them for horses, are we? A medical student